Oh, hello there! Hey everyone, first off, got a couple of apologies to make. Um, firstly, if I sound like crap, it's because I feel like crap. Um, I've got a stinking cold, and the audio quality on this camera is going to be just even worse than normal. Sorry for the clickbait nature of the title of this video. Um, the reason I've done that is because apparently that's how people find your stuff and, and watch your videos. <laughs> what I actually should have called this video is things I like about my photography and maybe you might like as well and can learn from. But that's a bit of a mouthful. So let's get into it. Um, for the first time ever, I've actually written down some things I want to talk about that are by here. Um, you can't see them because of the magic of the way that I've done the angle on this, but I've got a big old sheet of paper with a bunch of bullet points on it and we're going to run through them. <laughs> um, this probably won't take very long, um, but like I said, this is essentially things that I like in my photography, things I look for when I take pictures, whether consciously or subconsciously, and things that maybe you might find interesting or have noticed about my photography or perhaps might have not and maybe want to include in your kind of photography, so let's get into it. So. First point that I've written down here is the rule of thirds. Um, if you've been shooting photography for a while, uh, apologies if I'm telling you how to suck eggs here essentially, but the rule of thirds, what is that? Basically, it's the idea that um, things look nice in threes. Um, the basic way that I always see it in photography is if you're taking a 35 millimeter image, it's rectangular. Um, a lot of the time I look to have two thirds of negative space one third of the subject that I want to draw your eye to. It's a very simple process. Um, it works very well a lot of the time, um, and um, I use it quite a lot. Uh, probably gonna pop up some images now here for you to, to see that. So yeah, the rule of thirds, essentially, Things look best when there's a third of them with some with something going on and the rest of it with not much going on. It draws your eye towards it. That's basically the concept of it. Second thing I use an awful lot is leading lines. Um, again, apologies if you know what these are, but if you don't, a leading line is essentially something that draws your eye into the image and leads your eye through the image. It doesn't have to be a specific line. It can be something that your brain uh, thinks looks like a line. Uh, again, it's a way of um, I suppose fooling people into making the image look three-dimensional. Um, obviously a photograph is a 2D thing, but it's a 2D snapshot of something that was three-dimensional when you took the picture. Um, so a leading line, for example, a line of trees, a wall, uh, something that just bisects through the image um, is something that I use an awful lot. Um, you're going to see some images in a second that um, I think really, really show this, um, look out for them because it's not always just something very obvious. Sometimes it is something that just kind of um, bisects diagonally from front to rear of the image, moving off into the distance. Um, it doesn't always have to be a very obvious line. This next one is going to sound a little bit like a um, antithesis of itself, really, um, because it's going to be both it and the opposite of it at the same time. But I do use both. Uh, that is symmetry and asymmetry. Um, as you can probably tell from some of the images, if you're familiar with my work, I do like seeing symmetrical objects lined up against each other on opposite sides of a frame. Um, I think it works well for actually framing the image itself. That is something that I like to do a lot as well, but I like to use objects to frame things rather than the obvious thing of a big window or a block of something with a frame in the middle of it. So I think you'll probably notice a lot of the time things that I do with this are things like trees, uh, repeating trees alongside each other um, or um, I know, just say an object on one side of the, uh, of, the, of the image and then an object on the other side of the image. That way it frames the subject in the center of the image. At the 
same time though, I also like to use asymmetry as well. Um, I like to link that in with previously, as we've mentioned, the rule of thirds. Um, I think that works quite well. If you're looking to fill a third of the image um, with a subject, well, then you're probably sometimes not gonna have a directly opposite and symmetrical object on the opposite side of the image to match up with it. It still can work, it still can work nicely. Um, at the end of the day, if an image looks nice, an image looks nice. Um, these aren't hard and fast rules, they're just things that I subconsciously follow, so, you know. Another thing that I like to find um, when I'm out shooting um, is bold, vibrant colours um, that sort of pop out of the image. Um, it's an effect I like to use that, um, again, seems to give a little bit of a three-dimensional look to images. Um, they are 2D, obviously, but the world is 3D. It's a way of sort of fooling your eye into thinking that something is standing out and making it stand out a little bit more. Um, now, I'm not talking about selective colour on a black and white image. That stuff is garbage. Um, I do not go for the whole red coat, uh, red flower, red umbrella, and everything else is black and white. Uh, it's, it's horrible, it's horrible stuff. Um, what I'm talking more about is shooting in colour, looking out on the streets, looking for um, something that just kind of stands out. Um, it can be that the focus of your image is purely something because of the colour it is. Another thing I like to look for when I'm making images is minimalism. Um, I have a big problem with photographs that are very, very busy. Um, in fact, I'm going to show you one or two here that um, are from a while ago that I think are, in my opinion, busy. There's too much going on in them. What I like to do nowadays is I like to make things the focus of the image and minimalism is a way to do that. Again, this links in with things like the rule of thirds, links in again with leading lines, um, and it links in with what I've just mentioned about bold colours as well. Um, if you have a very, very blank image, but then something that is vibrant, something that is bright, something that stands out in one corner of the image, your eye is drawn to it, and that makes it very much the focus of what you're taking a photograph. If you want to take a photograph of I don't know, say a building, um, but there's loads and loads of buildings around it, how are you going to draw someone's eye to that building? Move with your feet. Move with your feet. Try and, uh, try and make sure that the one image that you're making is of that building and the other ones aren't showing. Minimalism, right there. Now, the final two I'm going to mention here are a little bit more difficult uh, to get into your photographs. Um, this first one uh, really, really depends on your sense of uh, humour, I guess, because it is humour. Um, not all images have to be funny, obviously. Not all images have to be serious, but sometimes uh, a little bit of humour into an image does add an edge to it. Um, say, for example, what I'm going to show you now. Now, obviously, it is difficult to get that into that. Um, Humour is not something that you can force into a photograph that you're taking, um, but it is something that I look for um, because at the end of the day, if I want to take a photograph, I think it's quite interesting if it's got a little bit of a funny side to it. And at the end of the day, life has a funny side, doesn't it? It's not always serious. This final one, I think, is the most difficult to get into your photographs, um, and that is your personality or personality of your photographic work. It has taken me a while to realize that I have a sort of style with my photographs. If you've been looking at my work for some time, you may notice that it doesn't all look the same, but it kind of does, if you know what I mean. Um, I can look at a photograph on a wall and I can tell if it's one I've taken, and it's not just because I know, oh, I remember I took that. It's more the fact that I can look at it and go, oh, that looks like one of mine. 
and that's because I think that my personality itself shines through on some of my photographs. Now the reason I say it's the most difficult thing to do in there is because it's not something you can force. This is passive, this is not positive, this isn't something you can force into your imagery, it's something that just subconsciously, because you've been shooting the same kind of images, you've developed a style over, over the years, over time, this is something that shines through. I think it shines through on mine, it may not for you, it may not for you yet, but I think that when you do hit that point where you can show your personality through your work, um, it does show, it really does show. Okay, thanks very much for watching uh, watching me talk there. Uh, this is obviously a little bit of a different kind of video than what I've done uh, before. I thought I'd give a little bit of, um, of a chat about, uh, about photography in general, really. Um, obviously, if you like what you saw here, then um, you know, like and subscribe. There'll be bits and pieces floating around my head, um, either now or very, very shortly. Um, check out some of the other videos on my channel. Um, if you want to see more stuff, um, from me on a regular basis, Instagram and Twitter, it's the same, I'm the 6 million P man, just go hunt me down over there. Um, other than that, leave a comment below, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and uh, I'll speak to you guys soon. Thanks very much.